Hi everyone, Keyboard Warrior here, and today we will be reviewing the Royal Clutch R75 Keyboard. Now this is one of Royal Clutch's newest keyboard, and it is so new I can't even find it on the official website. But it is legitimate because I can connect it to the software and it recognizes it as a type of keyboard. Now this keyboard is 75% layout and it is hot swappable, meaning that it is very easy for you to replace the switches. Now this board resembles very closely to the RKM75 but it is much more budget friendly. It still has a volume knob but it does not have the smart screen which I feel is okay because I don't think the screen is really very useful. So I got this keyboard for about $35 and compared to the M75 which is sold at $110, I think it is very value for money. And if you're someone who doesn't need the wireless option, you could get it at $15 cheaper. Now let's take a look at the board. Now right out of the package, we see a large amount of bubble wrap. The box itself has very minor dents, nothing impacting the keyboard, and the design of the packaging is nothing too flashy, but after all, it is a budget keyboard. Inside, we are greeted to a nice wrapped keyboard, but let's put it one side first and see what other accessories are provided. We have a keycap and switch puller, a standard cable, and some keycap replacements if you want to change certain buttons functions. Now the keycaps look like they are double shot ABS, but I cannot verify this from the website. Now I'm not sure what the cutout lines are for the back of the keycaps, but I feel that these keycaps are very tight when attaching it to the switches. Now what I love about Royal Clutch is that they almost always include a hard plastic cover, which allows me to cover it overnight to avoid dust accumulating. Now this is the black and grey version, but on the website they have another two more, a white purple one and a white green one. So this keyboard is a 75% layout and it comes with a beautiful volume knob. It also has tri-mode connection which means it is wireless and can connect via Bluetooth or 2.4GHz USB dongle or even wired USB-C cable. At the back of the board, we see that it's keycap feeds with two types of modes and this keyboard is entirely plastic which is not a surprise given that it is a budget keyboard. The design at the back is not overwhelming which is something that I personally prefer. And at the top of the keyboard, we see that there is a small area that has the switch for us to switch between the Bluetooth mode or the USB wireless dongle. And it has a USB-C port and a magnetic holder for the dongle itself. And now, here is a quick sound test of it in stock. The full sound test will be done at the end, but now let's look at the teardown of this keyboard. So this is a gasket mounted keyboard and to take it apart we first need to take off the volume knob. I'm not sure why but the volume knob could not be taken off and I could only take off this attachment. The next part will be to take out the wireless dongle and now we're gonna try and pry open the keyboard. Now I must say that this keyboard was quite hard to open but this is the method I use to open the keyboard. You will need a prying tool or a hard card that you can use to pry open the keyboard. So I will start by trying to split open the, the keyboard and the casing using a fingernail and sticking the card in and sliding it back and forth until the attachments open. Now you just need to repeat this on all four sides and the keyboard will be opened. Now when taking off the top cover, do be careful because at the top left of the keyboard, there is the dongle area that will be stuck in the keyboard and you need to take it out separately. Or just let it bounce out like that. Lifting the PCB, we have to remove the connector of the volume knob, the USB-C and the battery. So this board uses their own gasket socks which I think it is silicon. Now inside there is one layer of case foam and one sheet of silicon. Now I'm not really sure how the silicon affects the sound profile but I kind of like this board at the moment so I think it is not bad so far. And under the sheet, we can see the daughter board and the battery. So this battery is advertised as 3750mAh. Now let's take a look at the PCB and the switches. Now these are their own line of RK Snow Emperor switches. It is beige in color and lineal. And right off the bat, they feel very smooth. Opening it up, we see that they are indeed factory looped. And here's a quick sound test of it. And for the PCB, we see a very malleable sheet with flex cuts, very nice to make it flexible. And on the PCB, there is a plastic sheet with a paper kind of sheet and some power on foam. Now the plate should be made out of polycarbonate and it has flexi cuts as well to make it very flexible and soft for the typing experience. And this is their stock stabilizers. They came sufficiently looped, though I think more could be better and it was clipped off at the base. Overall, I think these stabilizers are very good on its own already, so there will be no need to mod it any further. 
Now I'm just gonna do a very small mod and what I felt was that the board had some hollowness to it. So I'm just gonna apply one thin layer of foam, change the switches and the keycaps. But when we reassemble the keyboard, do remember to attach the top part, which is done like this. And then you can put back the volume knob accessory and the dongle. So for the switches, I am using the Echo CS Lavender. They are hand looped with Crytox 205G0 and Crytox 105G0 for the springs. And for the keycaps, I'm using the Shimmer Clone XDA profile to give it a bit more of a thocky sound. So this is what the RGB of the keyboard looks like. I think it looks majestic. And thank you for watching to the end. Here is the sound test of the stock version and the modern version. Tell me in the comments what you think and like and subscribe if you want more.